Now, folks, just a couple quick thoughts. A year ago, if you had suggested to a bunch of smart political pundits, left, right, or center, that a year later, Donald Trump would be in complete control of every primary on Super Tuesday and the Republican Party and the Republican nomination and the Republican National Committee, and he would be the prohibitive favorite to win the general election in November, I don't think you would have had many takers, to be perfectly honest. But that's exactly what's happening. It's one of the great political comebacks of all time. In fact, just to stretch the point, if you had asked pundits two years ago, or better yet, three years ago, I think you would have had even fewer takers. But again, that's exactly what is happening. And that's where we find ourselves tonight, as of this reporting. Mr. Trump has run on the issues, and it's working. Joe Biden and the Democrats are trying to throw him in jail for 750 years, and that strategy looks like a colossal backfiring failure. National Review editor Rich Lowry writes in this morning's New York Post about Trump nostalgia. Well, it's an interesting point. People may be nostalgic for the strong Trump economy, for the strong Trump controls along the border, for the Trump revival of America's world standing. Folks sure don't have any nostalgia for Joe Biden and his big government socialism with its spending and taxing and borrowing and inflating and overregulating, war on fossil fuels in particular, and the war against business in general. A recent Fox News poll rating shows Biden 58% mostly failed on helping the working class. Shows 61% think he failed on improving the U.S. world image. 61% think he failed on handling the economy. 63% think he failed on making the U.S. safer. 69% think he failed to unify the country. 71% think he failed to improve border security. It's not good, Joe. It just doesn't look like people are that into you anymore. According to the New York Times Siena College poll, women are 20 percentage points more likely to say that Mr. Trump's policies have helped them more than Mr. Biden's have. Now, if that's not a shocker, I don't know what is. Women, New York Times, go figure. But the facts show that when inflation is factored in, typical working class folks got a big pay raise under Mr. Trump and a big pay cut under Mr. Biden. And that's a killer politically. Guaranteed, folks are going to vote in favor of the guy who gave him the raise every time. And with all this the Trump nostalgia or sound Trumpian policies, all of a sudden he has created a new GOP coalition that appears to include working folks of all stripes and colors, white, black, Latino, female, young, you name it, across the board. It has a Reagan-esque feel to it. There's a border war, and people favor Trump's remain in Mexico, build the wall, catch and deport approach. There's an economic war. People favor Trump's limited government tax cuts, deregulate, drill baby, drill approach. In trade and foreign policy, folks prefer Trump's America first approach. Conrad Black writes in the New York Sun today that as the wheels come off the Biden administration, the incumbent's reelection strategy relies on prosecuting Trump. But that's a strategy that looks like it's either going to be deferred or collapsed altogether. And the hot stove news this afternoon suggests that Mr. Biden plans to get really mean and attack Donald Trump on the campaign trail. That is, if he can muster the cognitive coherence to do it. Personally, I don't see Trump quaking in his boots over that one. So, folks, here we are, Super Tuesday, advantage Trump at the moment.